Hey everyone, welcome to the demo where we are going to focus on the database secrets engine. What we're gonna do is go ahead and configure the database secrets engine. We're going to connect to a database that I have running out in AWS in RDS. And then what we're gonna do is create a role and then finally generate credentials against that role. So let's take a look to see what we have here. Vault status, you can see I have a vault node already up and running. And then let's take a look to see what we have. Vault secrets list. And you can see I've got several different secrets engines that I've been playing around with, but we don't have the database secrets engine that's enabled yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So pretty simple, vault secrets enable database. We'll just keep it on the default path there. So now we have the database secrets engine. The first thing that we need to do for the database secrets engine is that we need to connect to a database. We need to create a configuration. Now, the way that we do that is vault, write, and then database, config, and then we're going to give it a name. In this case, I'm just gonna call it hcvop-db for our database. Now, what we need to do is provide all the information for the connectivity to our database. So the first thing we wanna do is just reference the plugin name. So this is going to basically tell the database secrets engine which type of database that we are interacting with. Now, in this case, I am using a Postgres SQL box. So Postgres SQL dash database dash plugin. Make sure that you go find out the name of the plugin that you need based upon the backend platform you're working with. And keep in mind that things like MySQL, you may find about three or four different types of plugins on the MySQL one. And that of course is based upon where you're running your MySQL database. So plugin name here, Postgres database plugin, we got that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to define the allowed roles. Now this is the role that we're gonna create after we create our config. So I've already given it a name. So allowed roles equals, and then I called it hcvop-demo-role. Now I haven't created this role yet, but that's what name I'm going to give it when we create it in a minute. So that's our allowed roles. Now keep in mind allowed roles, you may have to continuously update this as you get additional requirements from your customers or partners or internal customers meeting. So if somebody else comes to you with a different use case saying, hey, you know what? Uh, we have an application that is currently generating dynamic credentials for this database, but it only has read only credentials now. And maybe we have a new app that needs read write access to a certain table on this database. Well, that's gonna be a new role. So you're gonna go create that new role. But what you need to do is come back into this particular config for the database and you need to update the allowed roles configuration to add the additional roles. If you do not do that and you try to generate credentials for your new role and it's not set on here for allowed roles, you're basically going to get a message back from Vault saying that this role is not permitted to use this configuration. So make sure you come back and update your allowed roles as needed. So the next thing we're going to do is provide our connection details or our connection URL that's going to reach out and connect to our database. Now in this case, what I'm probably gonna do is just copy this. I have it listed on another screen, but we'll walk through the configuration here. So I'm gonna open quotes, I'm gonna paste that in, and then we're going to do a line continuation. So let's look to see what I have. I have Postgres SQL, I have username and password at, and then I have a URL of my RDS database that's living in Amazon right now. Now don't forget that if you are using something like RDS or running your database in a cloud provider, make sure that you open up ports to allow Vault to connect to it. So again, this is my connection URL. This is what Vault is going to use to establish connectivity to your database and then run commands. And the commands it's going to run are like, hey, I need to create a new user, I need to delete a user, things like that when it's requested by a Vault client. So that's our connection URL. The next thing is we just need to provide this username and password. So again, as I mentioned in the slides, the reason we kind of variableize this is when we read this configuration back, it won't actually show the username and password. It's more or less a security measure. So we're gonna type in username equals, and the username for this is just Postgres. 
and line continuation password equals and I gave it vault demo one, two, three. Super secure over here. <laughs> so I'm gonna hit enter here and we hope that it writes it. Okay, awesome. Now, the reason I said I hope it writes it is because if you write this configuration or when you write this configuration right here, vault actually goes out and double checks to see if it has access to this database. If your username is wrong, if your password is wrong, if there's a firewall or a security group or something blocking access from vault, to this connection string right here, Vault will not write this configuration. Vault double checks connectivity to this database as soon as you hit enter right here, okay? After you type in all this stuff, Vault actually goes out and double checks it. If you scroll over here, you can maybe see it right here. Here's all the database stuff right here, populating role rotation queue, starting periodic ticker, those kind of things. Again, Vault actually double checks it. If we were to write this again, if I were to hit up and say I typed in, I just got rid of one, two, three, and I were to change the name or something like that, make it incorrect, Vault would complain. It would say, hey, I can't communicate with this database server. So just make sure that before you write this, Vault has access to your database. The next thing we're gonna do now that we have our configuration done is we need to create a role. So this is gonna be the role that I referenced up here, this HCVOP demo role. So that's what we're gonna create. Vault writes database roles. That's where all the roles are saved and created. HCVOP-demo-role. That's what we called it. Again, you can call it whatever you want. Most of the time when I'm creating this for customers, the name right here is generally the name of the actual database server that we're connecting to. Just so it's 100% clear on what we're configuring. And then what I do is usually for roles, there is a standardization in terms of naming that I use right here too. So it may reference the name of the database, but then it may have reference to the application that's being used for this role. It may have reference to read only or read write or something like that. So make sure you come up with some sort of naming standard because when you look at this role, you should be able to quickly tell exactly what it's being used for. Getting off my soapbox for that <laughs> naming today. So we've got our role name, line continuation. The first thing we're gonna do is say, okay, this role, we're going to use the database connection up here. That's what this role is going to use when it generates credentials. So since you could just take this right here, copy that and put it in here. That's the database is going to use to generate credentials. The next thing is going to be the default TTL. That's gonna be four hours in this case, but make sure you set that to whatever you need to on your side. That's going to be the default lease for the generated credentials. Similar to a token, leases also have a TTL and a max TTL, and they can be renewed. And here we go, max TTL, just like I mentioned. I'm just gonna set this as 24 hours. And the last thing, I put it on the bottom line because it's probably pretty long. It's gonna probably get a line continuation here, but the last thing is going to be our creation statements. And a creation statements is essentially what Vault is going to execute against our database server when we generate credentials. So anytime a Vault client comes to Vault and says, hey, you know what? I need credentials against this particular role. It's going to essentially run this creation statement against the cluster and then we're going to get back credentials. So this creation statement, not only does it say, hey, go create a username and password, but the creation statement is where you will define the permissions that you want for this new user on the database. And what I'm gonna do is since this one is pretty long, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it and then we will paste it and take a look at it. So I'm gonna paste it into here. Let's take a look to see what we have. We have create role, a name, with login password of password. Vault is going to determine the name and password, and then it's going to insert that and then provide it to the database until, and it's gonna have an expiration, and then it's gonna set the permissions. This new user is gonna create is going to have grant select on all tables and schema public to anything. So in a sense, this is going to be sort of a root user on this database. So again, if you only want to have select star on table X, Y, Z, this is where you would add that in there. So cool, so that's pretty much it. We have our role, we gave it a name, database name referring to the database we created up here. We set a default TTL, we set a max TTL, and now we have our creation statement. 
So I'm gonna hit enter on here and we have our new configuration. So let's take a look at both of these. I'm gonna clear the screen here. Let's take a look at our connection first. So I do a vault read and then we're gonna look at our connection. So database config hcvop db. So here's the configuration for our database. You can see allowed roles. We were talking about that before. You can see the connection URL right here. You can see the password policy. We didn't assign a password policy. You can see the plugin, but you know what you don't see? You don't see this username and password like I mentioned before. Again, that's why we add username and password in here because when you read this configuration back, it does not provide that to the user. Cool, so the next thing is, let's take a look at our role that we just created. Vault read database roles hc vop dash demo dash role. And here we go, here's our role. We have a creation statement, we have a database name, default TTL, our max TTL, and then there are a couple other statements that we can provide in here as well. So this is essentially the configuration of our existing role. Now, one thing I want to mention to you is that when we created this database configuration right here, we provided it with a username and a password. Now, at some point, the database admin and us, we know this credential that's being used because, well, somebody gave it to us through email, through Slack, through something. And those credentials are essentially out in the wild now. What we can do is the database secrets engine, along with other things like AWS and other secrets engines, it provides the ability to rotate the root credential. So what we can do is go ahead and do that. So in order to rotate the root credential, we are going to do something like this. I'm gonna clear the screen. We're gonna say vault right. We may have to do a dash force, we'll see. And then we're gonna call out the path. So database slash rotate root, and then slash the name. The name that we gave our database was hcvop dash db. Now, what we do is when we hit enter, Vault is gonna use the credentials that we already provided it. It's gonna go to the database and it's gonna rotate those credentials for us. Let's see if this works. Cool, so success. Data written to database rotate root hcvop-db. Now, the credentials that we gave Vault before, if it hit up a couple times, let's see if we can find them right here. This Postgres and this Vault demo one, two, three, those are no longer valid because Vault using this right here, Vault went out and actually rotated those root credentials. So essentially use these credentials right here. It went to Vault, it rotated those credentials. And so these are no longer valid. At this point, only Vault and only the database know the credentials. No human actually knows the credentials that are going to be used between Vault and the database. And well, you can run those at any time. Let's see if we go back to the last one. We can run that at any time and we can run it as many times as we want. So if your organization has some kind of policy that says, hey, if we have any static credentials that need to be rotated, well, put this one on your list. This is a super easy way to quickly rotate the credentials that are used for Vault. And the last thing we're gonna do now is, well, we've created a config, we've created a role, we've rotated our root credentials. Now all is left is to read or generate credentials against our new role. So in order to do that, it's pretty simple. Vault read and then database creds and then we're gonna call our role name, hcvop-demo-role. Now hopefully our rotate root didn't miss anything up here, but if we were to call this particular endpoint, we should be able to generate dynamic credentials against our database. And there we go. So you can see that we've now generated dynamic credentials. Here's our username right here, and here is our password. You can see the lease duration is four hours, just like we told it to, and now we have a new lease. Here's the lease ID for these credentials. So now an application or a human user can take these credentials, log into that database, and go perform some work, write data, grab a report, read some data from a table, whatever we need to in that database. Now, the one thing I want to show you quickly is how we can revoke this lease. What we can do here is do a vault lease revoke and then just provide the lease ID. So pretty easy here. So we hit enter here and it says all revocation operations queued successfully. So now if we were to go back to that database server and we were to look for this user, it would not exist because with this lease revoke command, 
Vault has gone back to the database using our configuration and it has deleted this lease, which essentially that lease is the creation of this username and password. So Vault went back to the database and it deleted this user account that it created for us. So that's one way you can manually clean up your database is you can revoke the lease. The other way is if you want to revoke all the leases just for this demo role, you can do something like this, vault lease revoke, and then you can say dash prefix equals, and then you could have database creds hc vop dash demo dash role. If you were to run this, and then maybe not, it's not equals there, but if you were to run this, there we go, I didn't think it had equals. This essentially would revoke any credential that was generated with this HCVOP demo role. So if you had thousands of applications using this demo role to generate credentials, just by running this one command, well, you've deleted it all. So you've deleted everything for this particular role. And again, it uses the connection configuration to go delete those credentials on the actual database. So that's pretty much it for this one. We successfully enabled the database secrets engine. We created a configuration and validated that against our database. We created a role, we rotated the root credentials, and finally we went and generated dynamic credentials using the defined role that we set up. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.